Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday. How we doing tonight? Happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday. Hey, Kitty, how are you this Wednesday night? Great to have you here with us. It is terrific to have you here. I hope all is well in Illinois. Tonight, it, it is. It's hump day. I can't do that well, but it's hump day. Yes, it is. We're, we're barreling through week 47-48. We are getting our uh, gusto in and getting through it. So uh, another week uh, heading into the books here, and a wintry week it is. Hey, Adele and Dazzle, how are you? Great to have you here tonight. Great to have everybody here. Hope all is well in your world. Has it started to warm up any in the uh, center part of the country, or is it still bare? It's cold. Today we had sun, but it was cold. It was. It people were excited and and. Happy. Snowing sideways outside, yuck. I think we're supposed to get a dusting tomorrow, but I don't really know. I haven't looked. I I brought up the weather to look, and then I uh, never hit play on it. Um, but it is it is definitely uh, cold out there. I was I I was only out to run errands today, but uh, it was cold. Yuck. Well, it's a good thing Dazzle's an indoor cat, likes her creature comforts. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, it is, uh, I don't like the cold. I don't like the cold. Excuse me. Excuse me. But it is great to have everybody here on this hump day. We're halfway through the week here. We're making it to the other side. I'm excited about that. I am, I am. You know, I, I, it's a good day to have a good day, as they say. It's a good day to have a good... Where did I put my water? I needed a sip of water. Well, let's get this party started tonight because I'm early-ish. I'm more eight than ish tonight. Go figure. I'm more eight than ish. Who would have thought it was possible? Let's get started with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is where we get started. Tonight we are on page 144, if you're following along in the book. You're indescribable. We writers spend our lives trying to do you You know, that that made me laugh, Adele. Hey, Krita, how are you? Uh, the little princesses we raise, you know, the outside. Although Max has wanted to play in the snow this week, uh, you know, which is which is unlike him. It's uh, he, He's a little weird uh, with that, uh, but uh, because most of the rest of the time he can be a little princess. Ah, so continuing this week, this week our theme is is Lessons from the Super Bowl. Lessons from the Super Bowl. Well, actually from football in general, but the Super Bowl. And uh, again, we have to pay homage to... And the concept I want you to think about tonight... It is victories. Victories. Okay? Tom Brady's had a bunch of them in his career. Okay? And uh, this was his seventh Super Bowl win. Uh, he's shooting 70% uh, on the uh, Super Bowl. You know, I mean, some people would say that's only he's only getting a C. But, you know, all in all, he's, uh, he, he's doing pretty good. Uh, 70% 70, 70 in Super Bowl wins uh is pretty good and part of that is uh how many of them he's played in um but in even just getting to the game but the concept of of victories lead to other victories okay victories lead to more victories 
and small wins lead to big wins, you know. Um, the small wins all season long that uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had led them to the ability to have that big win in the Super Bowl. So, and as small business owners, we so often overlook all our small wins, okay, all the little victories. So what victories did you have even just today? What victories did you have today that will build upon and give you more victories tomorrow? You know, every day we have to look at the uh, the ending, okay, and, and so often the human mind looks at all the things that we did not get done. I know I have a large list of things. I was originally going to go into the stores and get a bunch of stuff done today. I didn't do that. That's added to my list for tomorrow. So it's like that's sitting on my list. But all the things I did get done today, okay, um, are quite amazing and and really, um, really exciting. So, um, you know, that is you know, it is important to count on those victories because those victories build other victories. And that is our football lesson for the night. So take and cherish your victories, no matter how big or small, every day. You have wins every day. You have wins in the win column. Okay, yes, uh, there can be hard days. That doesn't make the days easy. Uh met a new customer who said she's bringing her sister back. Exactly. That's a win, Kitty. That's a win. That's two new customers. Two new customers. Okay? That's a win. And the lifetime value of your customer, okay, which is in the thousands and thousands of dollars, that's a huge win. That's a huge win. Put that in the win column. Boom! Check that off. There's a victory. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about, because when you have these wins, it is so inspiring. And, and you know, we get, we get not that we don't have to work on the other things, okay, that, that we need to make better, but uh, these things are pretty uh, freaking awesome. Hey, Jennifer's with us tonight. Great to have you with us, Jennifer. Good to have you here. Great talk catching up with Brad uh, multiple times today. I can, I can count multiple calls with Brad today. <laughs> uh, good to catch up with him. Uh, but that's the kind of thing we do. It's all these wins. So I made progress on my call list today. That's a win. Okay? It's not all the things you didn't get done. It's taking in these victories that we do have. And that is so important. So don't lose track of it. There is your football analogy of the day. Things we learn from the big game. Okay? You didn't think I'd come up with all this stuff, you know? I got stuff up here. <laughs> There's stuff up in there. It all starts up here. Uh, let's take a quick look at what's happening in the world. Our friends at ThreadUp are laying off 200 workers as it's closing its distribution center in, um, blah, I think it's in Illinois, isn't it? Uh, Vernon Hills, Illinois, they're closing their... Uh, Distribution center there. Um, and in the uh, 12 years since that they've been around, they have processed more than 100 million people. That's a lot of clothes. I mean, I know I've handled millions and millions, we, well, not me personally, but our company has in our existence, but hundred more than a hundred million is a lot of clothes. Um, but, uh, you know, they're consolidating into other distribution centers, um, and they're watching costs, you know, that it would cost more to run the Illinois center. So, um, that is something they're looking at and they're laying off 200 workers as a part of that. Um, in the work picked up in the other centers, you, you can bet that they won't add 200 workers. Um, so it's not, it is not jobs that will be offset. That's, uh, you know, just something to keep an eye on. I think this is an interesting promotion. You know, so a lot's been over the last couple of years uh, with Popeyes and their chicken sandwiches, okay? And um, 
Popeyes is now betting that their chicken lovers will like fish. I don't know. Love that chicken at Popeyes. Love that fish at Popeyes. I don't know. But but here's where the, it's interesting, okay? So how about this for promotion? They're betting. Um, they're, they're asking you. They're not even. Um, they're asking you, would you pay? Would you bet that you'll like the sandwich? Okay, would you gamble that you'd like the sandwich? For for an extra 15 cents, so you can buy insurance on your fish sandwich. You order a fish sandwich from Popeyes, um, and if you buy the insurance, which costs you an extra 15 cents, I mean, this is like an extended warranty on your fast food sandwich. So for an extra 15 cents, you can get the insurance. If you don't like the sandwich, then the the insurance is they'll replace it with a chicken sandwich. Okay? But if you don't get the insurance, if you don't spend the 15 cents and you don't like it, well, tough tough fish sandwiches on you. Okay? Um, I don't know how many I I think it's going to be interesting to see how many people they sell that insurance to. Um and uh you know that is uh uh that is interesting. I just thought it was it was an interesting thing. Kathy, does your husband like the chicken or does he like has he has he tried one of the new fish sandwiches there? I have had the chicken before. It's not big up here in the north. Um they don't have a lot of stores up here. Uh but uh it does uh they do have some. Uh, Target has joined the bandwagon of uh, retailers that will give um, bonuses to their employees for getting the COVID shot. They're going to give four hours of pay to get the two shots. It will also cover the cost of a lift ride up to $15 each way to the vaccination appointment. Oh, he's tried the fish. That's very interesting. I, I You know, it is very interesting. <laughs> yes, I know they're calling about the car extender warranties, but uh, the you know I I you know the, the extra fifteen cents on a chicken sandwich. I mean, would you check would you check that on a on a fish sandwich? I don't know. I I I know that I had to uh, you know sneak in the. I've said it before. I had to sneak in to my grandmother right when she was in the nursing home. I'd always sneak in the fillet of fish to her. That would be her guilty pleasure. From McDonald's uh, would be that, and we'd get the rabbi to bless it, so that she was having kosher fillet of fish um, at, in the uh, in the nursing home. Uh, but that that would be uh, what we do. So Target has more than 350,000 part-time and full-time workers who will be eligible for this four hours of pay plus a ride via Lyft, $15 each way. It will, Target will not require the employees to get the vaccine. Uh, and that's generally what I'm seeing out there for, for vaccinations uh, that they are not uh, forcing, companies are not looking to force people to do it. And we hope people will do it. Uh, Nana got her vaccine, first vaccine shot today, and that was actually uh, a fairly easy imp- Using the state system was incredibly difficult. I, I will say that. Cassandra, and I think I talked a little bit about it last night. Cassandra and I sat with it and tried to find her an appointment and everything with the state system. And then we went over to Walgreens system, and I got her an appointment right away. You know, yesterday I did it for today. And, uh, you know, it really was not a big deal uh, once she got there. So uh, it was uh, it was a nice thing. And actually, Massachusetts, is going tomorrow massachusetts starting tomorrow will allow if you bring if you're taking someone um to an appointment helping get them to their appointment you are now uh, eligible to get the shot even if you aren't in the current allowed group um if you're bringing someone who is in the allowed group to the shot um and you get it at the same time so that's kind of interesting what massachusetts is doing in it and that starts tomorrow 
Uh, Kohl's is turning to Eddie Bauer as outdoor sales surge. Kohl's on Monday announced a tie-up with Eddie Bauer to launch this coming fall, an assortment of the brand's outdoor uh, brand seasonal gear and year-round products for women, men, and kids will be sold in as many as 500 stores and online. Um, the partnership furthers the retailer strategy announced last year to grow activewear from 20% to at least 30% of its sales, which includes driving growth in the outdoor category. Um, so that will be interesting to see the Eddie Bauer brand uh, revived and uh, brought into coal. So there you go. Um, Simon Property Group, the largest mall owner in um, the country, um, has said that the American suburb is poised for a comeback and malls run by Simon are set to benefit. Uh, that the suburbs are going to be hot and where the action is in the future. Um, and that will be a good opportunity. Uh, there's been much discussion about people moving away from cities in order to have more space, both indoors and out, while they were forced to stay home during the pandemic. Um, and while it's unclear how long that might last uh, with people, you know, fleeing cities uh, to the suburbs, it is expected to continue to be a, uh, a big deal as people have done that uh, to have uh, more distance and have been enjoying that. It's also going with the way telework has been doing, so that you didn't have to be in the city and things. Um, so, uh, and uh, according to Shlomo Chop, the founder and CEO of uh, Shop Fulfill, the affluent suburbs have always been where a retail store can operate profitably. Uh, so, uh, and they have had increased in uh, leasing requests. Uh, where's the number here? Uh, uh, Simon had collected 90% of its billed rents from its U.S. portfolio for the second, third, and fourth quarters of 2020. Um, the dollar intake was lowered somewhat by rent abatements. And occupancy was 91.3% as of December 31st. And a number of new leases have been signed for shorter terms. Um, so uh, it is, it is uh, interesting how uh, retail space is being picked up. So we will uh, keep an eye on that. Um, that can be a good thing for all of us. You know, if people are, you know... If they're expecting, if the big guys are expecting a surge in shopping, uh, that can be very, very good for us. Um, this is interesting. So Nike was sued uh, by a deaf person. Um, and because of this, Nike will now equip workers with clear masks to, uh, to settle a lawsuit. Uh, their masks will be transparent so that uh, to accommodate people who are deaf and hearing impaired, um, as long as it's COVID-19 policy to provide face, back, uh, face masks remain in effect. So uh, this was in California where this lawsuit happened. But, uh, you know, lawsuits like this can happen anywhere. I miss people's smile, but I, you know, I don't know about the clear masks. Um, you know, it, it is, uh, you know, the case demonstrates that retail businesses and employers must make sure they consider the implications of policies related to COVID-19 safety precautions, including employee masking requirements. But uh, masking policies must be implemented in a manner consistent with laws requiring accommodations for disabilities, the attorneys wrote. So um, interesting the way that's uh, going. Um, our friends in Congress have um, continued. Uh, the $15 minimum wage bill came out of committee. Um, 
the Education and Labor Committee, of which our congressman here in Connecticut, uh, Joe Courtney, is on, uh, and heard from him tonight about it. And uh, so it is expected, you know, it's currently making its way through Congress. What this final $1.9 trillion bill actually says, does, et cetera, that is still being written. I mean, I love that we have the price tag and we're working backwards to make legislation that fits it. But, uh, um, you know, this is how sausage is made in Washington. But uh, they, the, the $15 minimum wage is still alive in it uh, as it came out of the Education and Labor Committee as part of their, their bill. Um, if you are in a part of the country that is nowhere near that or is not on track of that, you need to be aware of that because it is, it is, even if it is not part of this bill, it is coming. I have no doubt that they will get it through this year. Um, it is only a matter of when, not a matter of if. Um, so, um, and that will have a big effect on states with low minimum wages. If you are a sub ten dollar minimum wage, you've got to be ready to go to nine um, or ten dollars an hour very, very fast. If your starting wage is below ten. Um, because all, all the versions of this bill that I have seen have it, uh, you know, jumping to nine, then nine something, then eleven. I think it jumps to nine fifty, then eleven, um, all within a, a little over a year. So um, you gotta you gotta be adapting to that. It's not something to be afraid of. It's something to understand and adapt your business to. Um, you know, don't be afraid of it, um, but the train ha has left the station on that one. Um, da -da -da -da. Our friends at the SBA continue to uh, implement fixes to get the PPP loans out. They are working hard at that. I uh, communicated with the Senate Banking Committee, Small Business Committee today on it. Um, yeah, one of those committees. I forget which one they actually are. Um, they've had as much as, you know, they've gotten the errors down to about 4.7% of uh, data showing anomalies, mismatches, glitches, or concern, and they're uh, rapidly um, fixing that. The PPPs have got $103 billion out the door right now, $103 billion. So we're not quite at half yet here in the second week of February uh, of the money that, but we will be we will cross the half uh, waypoint this week in the money that they have. Remember, this program goes till the end of March or when they run out of money. So if you're eligible for a first PPP or a second PPP, you want to get your application in. Time, as I have stated, is of the essence. Time is of the essence to get these applications in. You want to have them in and uh, get yours processed. If you're having a problem with yours, you want to get your bank on top of it and get it reprocessed um, because the SBA is listening and getting these fixed and getting them out there. Uh, okay. So let's talk about a different way so the employee retention tax credit for a minute. I need you guys to have on your thinking caps for this one because this is every time I talk employee retention tax credit, it requires thought. Remember, you get to replay this anytime you want. So um, we've been having I, – I've been help working with a lot of people and, and going back and forth with people on the employee retention tax credit. And one of the issues with it is many states, okay, like I've talked about northern states, like the whole northeast um, is eligible for the employee retention tax credit because of the um, shutdowns um, and occupancy limits that exist in the northeast. Illinois is available for it as an example, okay, and they're, I think they're up to 50% occupancy in Illinois right now. Um, so they still can't have a big clearance sale or anything in their stores because they have all these uh, restrictions on their operation, which qualifies them to take the employee retention tax credit for payroll that is not um, 
paid using uh, PPP funds. So, you know, I've had a lot of people in states that have no restrictions, okay, in place. Uh, Florida um, being one of them. Um, Indiana, where Mike Pence was from, um, is from. I think he's returned to Indiana as far as I know. Um, does not have a lot of restrictions in place. Um, I did not, except for at the beginning. Many of these states had these restrictions in place at the beginning. You were closed down for a period of time. You had to, you were allowed to reopen, but you were re allowed to reopen with re restrictions. Uh, for example, Indiana didn't get to reopen uh, with uh, out restrictions until uh, the end of uh, June, the beginning of July. July 3rd, I think they they moved to phase four with no restrictions. So why is that important? Well, in the rules, you can't use PPP money and claim the ERTC for the same payroll. But the rules also now allow you to adapt how you how and when you spent your PPP. So in you could even let's say you got your PPP in on the early side in April. You didn't have to use it. You just have to use it over 20, up to any time between 8 and 24 weeks. So you could have payroll that you did not use it for in the beginning, okay, as an example. So you could have used that in May and June. Instead of using your PPP, you could claim the employer retention tax credit. And then when you were open without restrictions in July, you could use your PPP money. Let me let me step back, stepping back, and say that again. So if you were under restrictions in April, May, June, when you got when you first got your PPP, you were under restrictions, and then those restrictions were lifted at the end of June or beginning of July or something, you could claim the ERTC, the Employee Retention Tax Credit, for those months where you were under restriction and then have your PPP weeks start after that, okay, and use your payroll after that for the PPP so that you gain some benefit from the employee retention tax credit. And, you know, again, this, these, these, and it's a credit, but it's cash. They will send you cash. These um, programs are there to help you, okay, to help you have a solid foundation for your business to build your business back stronger, okay, and make your business the strongest it can be. And so if you can take advantage of it, um, you should. You should avail yourself to it um, if you are eligible, okay. In a state that had restriction is one of the uh, ways to do that. If you had an occupancy restriction, 25, 40, 50 percent occupancy restriction that limited the way you could conduct business, that would make you eligible for it. So um, it is um, it, it is a good thing. It is a smart way to do it. You can spend the PPP over any eight to twenty-four week period. So you could use if if you were never el ever eligible to take the use the PPP again. I mean to use the employee retention tax credit again because your state had no restrictions. It would be smart to use the employee retention tax credit first then your PPP money. So use the employee retention tax credit when you have a restriction, then start using your PPP uh, when you didn't have a restriction. Even though your clock starts on the PPP on the day it's deposited, it does not have to be used for all your payroll dollars um, during that period. Okay, you can you get to pick and choose under the current rules. You still have to use 60% of it towards payroll, 40% of it to non-payroll, but you get to pick and choose. Again, the employee retention tax credit, you have two years to go back and claim that and, and get the money from that. Uh, two years from when you paid the tax. Two years from when you paid the tax to go back and get it. So it's not time sensitive, but it is real money. Um, it is real money. It's much more time sensitive to collect on um, a PPP or second PPP if you are eligible, um, as time is uh, dwindling on that. But this different way of looking at the employee retention tax credit 
can help many of you um, who were not who are in states that had little to no restrictions, um, especially as they reopen, but had it um, for a period of time, uh, a brief period of time. Many states had government orders in place for a brief period of time. Um, and um, if you can claim that and have that available to you, that can really help some of you in these states that didn't have a lot of restrictions because most of those states had them in the beginning. So just, and again, that is based on the fact that you have not filed for forgiveness yet. If you've already filed for forgiveness, you are under the obligations of the time frames and everything that you did in that. But if you haven't, which you are under no obligation to file for forgiveness on your first PPP yet, um, this is an opportunity for if you're in a state um, that had less restrictions um, moving forward uh, to take on uh, the employer retention tax credit and uh, cash in on that because I do want you to get uh, everything that you're entitled to with that. I know it's confusing. It is insanely confusing i have been working on it constantly and it's confusing um but you are uh you are eligible for it so um you know keep that in mind because i want you to get everything that you're entitled to everything that you're entitled to you know everything that i talk about here everything that i talk about goes over to nerds.org slash resale strong by noon the very next day noon all the files the videos, everything I talk about goes over there, thanks to Adele and Cassandra that make that happen. You can find all the videos there on the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store, where you can like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when a new video drops. You can also share it out with all your friends in business, uh, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, whatever they do, we want to help them get to the other side. Yes, we do. Absolutely, we do. We're going to help everybody get to the other side. Um, I am here every night at More 8 Than Ish, More 8 Than Ish, live in the NARC's private Facebook group. That is where you find me. If you have a question in between, you email me, neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, N-E-I-L, excuse me, at ecistores.com. We start this program every night, every night, with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start this program every night. If you were not here at the top of the program tonight, we're on page 144. You're indescribable. We writers spend our lives trying to do you justice, and you're always more than we can capture. Good morning. Our good night tonight is you're indescribable. We writers spend our lives trying to conjure you from every angle. We get close enough to keep trying. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abrams, and I do like a good party. A wedding, a bar mitzvah even. We will party again, and when we do, we will be in person. I can promise you that. I will, I will. Whenever we can be there, I will be there with you. But until then, and until tomorrow night at more 8 than ish, know that you, and you, but most especially you, yes, you, I see you sneaking back there. You're not alone running this store. It's time for dessert, everybody. Have a great night.